let me move on to question number one so here quantity number one is two variety of wheat are mixed together while the first variety is 90 percentage pure wheat and the rest will be contaminants so friends by reading the first three lines we can surely say that this question is based on allegation and mixture right so friends there are two quantity of wheat and the first quantity which contains 90 percentage pure and the rest will be contaminants the meaning of contaminants will be impurities right so they are saying that variety number one so let me take this as variety one that is wheat variety one where 90 percentage pure if 90 percentage pure then the remaining 10 percentage will be impure so this can be taken as 9 is to 1 ratio so in the first quantity of wheat where wheat will be 9 parts and the one part will be impurities and they are saying that the other variety so second variety of wheat and impurities are in a ratio 8 is to 3 so friends there is another variety of wheat second variety so in this variety where the ratio of wheat and impure will be 8 is to 3 ratio so friends in first variety where 9 part is wheat and one part will be impurities and the second variety where 8 part is wheat and 3 part will be impurities so now both the variety of wheat will be mixed and we need to find what is the ratio of uh, new mixture thus formed right so we need to find the ratio friends listen here first of all we know that 9 part is wheat and here 8 part is wheat so first of all let me calculate this as 9 divided by 10 so out of 10 part 9 part will be wheat and similarly here out of 11 part 8 part will be wheat so this can be taken as the lcm will be 110 right so 11 which 99 and this will be 10 which is 80 so finally this can be taken as 179 divided by 110 so in the new mixture where the wheat will be in the ratio 179 divided by 110 now the impurities impurities will be one part so out of 10 part one part will be impurity here and similarly out of 11 part three part will be impurity so out of 11 part three part is impurity so finally this can be taken as 110 right so 11 so 1 1 and it should be 10 so 30 so 41 so 41 divided by 110 so listen here friends it's a wheat that when we mixed a two variety of wheat so finally the wheat form will be 179 divided by 110 and this will be the impurities right so impurity will be 41 divided by 110 so our target to find the proportion of new mixture this form so we can say that 179 divided by 110 so this will be 41 divided by 110 so when we cancel both the values the resultant will be 179 as to 41 so finally we can say that for the first quantity the ratio will be 179 as to 41 so let me move on to the second quantity quantity number two so by using a quantity number one the data they have given we have found that quantity number one ratio will be 179 is to 41 so by using quantity number two so we need to find some values right a milkman mixes water in the milk in the first container so after mixing the respective ratio between water and milk will be 1 is to 7 so friends this question is also based on allegation and mixture right so first of all milkman mixes water and milk and in the first container so finally the ratio will be water and milk is 1 is to 7 so let me take it as container number 1 so in container number 1 where water and milk will be 1 is to 7 ratio so out of 8 parts where 1 part will be water and the 7 part will be milk and what he is doing is he pours the mixture so he pours the complete mixture in the another container so that container contains 85 percentage of milk so let me take this as container number two friends listen here if there is 85 percentage milk then 15 percentage remaining will be water right so when we cancel this on five table it will be 17 it will be three so finally we can say that in container number two so milk and water will be in the ratio 17 is to 3 in the first container which is 1 is to 7 where milk will be 7 and water will be 1 here milk will be 17 and water water will be 3 so now we need to find what is the respective ratio between milk and water in the second container so friends if we pour this mixture to this container so we need to find what is the new ratio so friends i think similar to the previous case right so here we know that seven parts will be milk so seven divided by total eight and similarly here milk will be 17 and the total parts will be 20 so this can be taken as lcm will be 40 right so eight fives are 40 this will be 35 and we know the 20 into 2 so 17 into 2 will be 34 so finally this can be done as 69 divided by 40 and this will be milk so second part that is water so water is in the ratio 1 so out of 8 part one part will be water and in the second container out of 20 parts 
where three parts will be water right so finally when we take lcm 40 8 phase of 40 it will be 5 so again 20 into 2 3 into 2 will be 6 so this can be taken as 11 divided by 40 so we need to find what is the respective ratio so this can be when we cancel 40 and 40 so the ratio will be 69 is to 11 so friends by using quantity number one we found a ratio that is 179 is to 41 and quantity number two which is 69 is to 11 so we need to compare this and we need to check whether quantity one is greater than or quantity two is greater than listen here friends this quantity one can be taken as 179 divided by 41 and quantity number two which is 69 divided by 11 so now we need to compare this friends. i think we have already learned many question that is based on this pattern because equation type we just cross it right so that we can easily find whether quantity one or two greater than so friends by seeing this this will be four times right approximately four or five times when we divide so when we divide it will be six times so finally we can say that quantity number two is greater than so the answer for this question will be quantity number one is less than quantity number two so finally we got an answer for this question that is quantity one is less than quantity two or quantity two is greater than quantity number one so once this question is based on allegation and mixture question number two a cube is melted so as to cast a several cubes of length of side 2 meter. The ratio of length of side of older cube and the newer cube is 3 is to 1 respectively. So what is the number of cubes so formed? So friends listen here uh, by reading this question we can surely say that this question is based on measurement topic right why because they are talking about cube something. So friends first of all a cube is melted to form a small cubes and the small cube length should be 2 meter. And they have given a data that the ratio of length of the side of the older cube to the newer cube, the ratio will be 3 is to 1. So we need to find how many cubes are formed. So listen here friends, first of all, there is a older cube, but we don't know what about its length. But this older cube is melted to form a small cubes. And we don't know how many cubes this form. So and uh, this new cube where the length will be 2 meter. Listen here friends, they have given the ratio of length of side of older cube and the newer cube. So this will be the new cube of length 2 meter and the old cube we don't know what about its length but the ratio will be 3 is to 1. So we can say that if one part will be 2 meter then three part will be 6 meter. So finally we can say that the older cube length will be 6 meter and the new cube length will be 2 meter and the ratio will be 3 is to 1. So friends can you able to understand this concept. The new cube where the length is 2 meter right and the old cube we don't know what about its length but by using a data 3 is to 1 ratio so one part will be new cube 2 meter length so then the three parts will be 6 meter old cube length so by using this we need to find if this cube is melted so we need to find how many cubes this formed friends listen here friends if length is 2 meter then we can say that the volume will be a cube so volume of smaller cubes so this volume will be a cube which is 2 meter the old cube so 8 meter cube so finally we can say that 8 meter cube will be the volume of a new cube so old cube volume will be so volume of old cube which is 6 meter cube so 6 meter cube will be 216 so 216 meter cube will be the old volume and the new volume will be 8 meter cube so our target to find what is the number of cube form so when we divide this 216 divided by 8 the resultant will be i think uh, 227 so finally we can say that 27 new cubes will be formed so finally by using quantity number one we have found the value that is 27 quantity number one okay friends so let me move on to quantity number two a person jog around a circular park of diameter 210 meters Again, this quantity number two is also based on measurement. So friends, a person is jogging around a circular path, right? So circular path and uh, the diameter will be 210. If the diameter is 210, then we can say that the radius will be 105 meters. Okay. So he aimed to cover 6.6 .6 kilometers. So how many meter around he has to go to cover this distance? So friends listen here there is a circular field right and the diameter will be 210 so we can take the radius as 105 meter so a person wants to cover 6.6 .6 kilometers so we need to find how many rounds he has to take listen here friends if he need to cover 6.6 .6 kilometers then definitely we need to find first of all what is the circumference of the circular field so if we need to find what is circumference of a circular field the formula will be 2 pi r 
so we can say that 2 into pi can be taken as 22 by 7 don't take us 3.14 if you take it as 3.14 then we need to multiply and waste your time so let me take pi as 22 by 7 and the radius will be 105 so finally when we cancel this the resultant will be uh, 135 15 so 15 into 2 will be 30 30 into 22 will be 660 so when 660 meter will be the circumference of the given circular field and uh, he wants to cover 6.6 .6 kilometers listen here friends here the values are in meters but he need to cover 6.6 .6 kilometers so if we need to convert 6.6 .6 kilometers into meter so this can be taken as 6600 meter so he need to cover 6600 meter and the circumference of the given circular field will be 660 meter so we need to find how many rounds he has to cover right so finally we when we divide this 6600 divided by 660 so this can be taken as 10 rounds so finally by using quantity number 2 we found the answer is 10 by using quantity number 1 we found the answer is 27 so now we need to compare this and we need to say which is greater than so here 27 is greater than so quantity number 1 is greater than quantity number 2 so finally we can say that the answer for question number 1 sorry question number 2 will be quantity 1 that is greater than quantity 2 question number 3 so Ari buys a shirt with 4 percentage discount whose marked price is 2100 rupees still the seller gains 12 percentage so what is the cost price of the shirt so listen here friends this by reading this question we can surely say that this quantity number one is based on profit and loss so friends first of all a marked price of a shirt will be 2100 rupees so let me take it as quantity number one so the marked price of the shirt will be 2100 rupees and the person Ari buys a t-shirt for four percentage discount so friends one percentage will be 21 four percentage will be 84 so 2100 minus discount 84 so we can surely say that Ari buys a shirt for 2100 minus 84 will be 2016 rupees okay so friends even though the seller sells for 2016 rupees he is gaining 12 percentage then we can definitely say that this amount will be 112 percentage that is 2016 so we need to find what is cost price that is 100 percentage is equal to x so x is equal to 2016 divided by 112 into 100 so x is equal to i think uh, this will be one times so the remaining will be eight times so 18 into 100 will be 1800 so finally we can say that the cost price of the shirt will be 1800 so friends by using quantity number one we found the answer that is 1800 so let me move on to quantity number two a seller allows a discount of 10 percentage on a watch again this question is based on discount so we can say that profit and loss right so a seller allows a discount of 10 percentage on a watch if a customer buys a pair of watch then he offers four percentage extra discount he buys two watches for 960 rupees so what is the price of two couple of watches so friends listen here it's one of the interesting questions so you need to understand the concept carefully right so friends I, I can teach you the normal traditional method because if you go for a shortcut then you need to learn the basics first of all properly so instead of teaching shortcut let me move on to the normal method so friends here a seller allows a discount of 10 percentage if he buys only one watch right and if he buys a uh, two watches that is pair of watches he is allowing a discount four percentage extra and the person buys two watches for 960 rupees listen here friends then we can surely say that 960 rupees will be 96 percentage because let me take 100 percentage 100 percentage 4 percentage discount will be 96 percentage so 96 percentage will be 960 so we need to find what is 100 percentage so 100 percentage is equal to x so finally x will be 1000 because when we cancel this resultant will be 1 so 100 into 10 will be 1000 so finally we can say that two watches cost will be 1000 and uh, we already know that he is buying two watches so one watch will be so one watch will be 500 and the second watch a second watch will be 500 so finally we can say that two watches will be thousand right and the marked price will be thousand listen carefully friends a seller allows a discount of 10 percentage on a watch so we know that one watch cost will be 500 and he is allowing 10 percentage discount so finally this can be taken as 90 percentage will be this rupees 500 and 100 percentage is equal to x so finally x is equal to 500 into 100 divided by 90 so when we cancel 0 and 0 i think uh, when we cancel this this will be 40 again uh, it will be 555 
so 55 into 10 will be 550 so finally we can say that cost price of one watch so cost price of one watch will be 550 so our target to find what is the price of two couple of watches so two couple of watches will be four watches so into four will be 2220 right so finally we can say that 2220 will be the cost of two couple of watches that is quantity number two so friends quantity number two we found the answer 2220 so quantity number one we found an answer 1800 so now we need to compare this we can definitely say that quantity number two is greater than quantity number one so friends one of the most important question listen here first of all he bought a watch for 960 a pair of watch so we can say that with allowing a four percentage extra discount so 100 percentage minus four percentage will be 96 percentage so 96 percentage will be 960 so 100 percentage will be x so finally we can say that the marked price of two watches will be thousand and the one watch will be 500 and the second watch will be 500 so finally we can say that both the watch the marked price will be thousand right and the next thing is so this watch we already know that in the first point itself a seller allows a discount of 10 percentage on a single watch so we can say that this 500 will be 10 percentage discount which is 90 percentage so 90 percentage will be 500 100 percentage is equal to x from the marked price so finally we can say that the cost price of one watch will be 550 so if one watch is 550 our target to find what is the price of two couple of watches one couple will be two watch two couple will be four watch so one watch will be 550 four watches will be 2220 so finally by comparing both the quantities we can surely say that quantity number two will be greater than question number four and the quantity number one is a boy is four years older than his brother so after four years from now the boy age will be two times his brother age after two years so what will be the ratio of their age three years later from now so friends finally we can say that by reading a question so this quantity number one is based on ages right problems on ages so friends first of all there are two person one is boy and his brother so boy is four years older than his brother so let me do one thing friends so let me take the boy age as x so quantity one so let me take the boy age will be x then we can surely say that his brothers will be four years older so we can say that the brother will be x minus 4 so let me assume that boy age will be x and the brother age will be x minus 4 after four years from now the boy age will be two times his brother so friends listen here friends after four years right so we can take this as x plus 4 because after four years so the boy age will be two times right so two times his brother age which is x minus 4 okay after two years so plus two so friends if you frame this equation correctly then solving all the question and problems on ages will be so simple listen here friends first of all we have took boy age as x and the brother's age will be x minus 4 right so after 4 years so x plus 4 so after 4 years the boy age will be equal to twice listen the word carefully two times his brother age after two years right so two times his brother age after two years so now we need to simplify this and we need to find what is the age of boy so this can be taken as x plus 4 so here it is minus 4 plus 2 will be minus 2 so 2x minus 4 right because here it is minus 2 so 2 minus 2 into minus 2 will be minus 4 so i think uh, when we add this this will be 8 so 2x minus x will be x so finally we can say that x is equal to 8 where we found the boy age will be 8 and his brother age will be 8 minus that is 8 minus 4 will be 4 so finally we can say that boy age will be 8 and the brother age will be 4 but they are asking what is the ratio of their ages 3 years later from now so friends 3 years later so 3 years later just add 3 8 plus 3 will be 11 and 4 plus 3 will be 7 so we need to find the ratio right so finally in quantity number 1 we have found the ratio 11 is to 7 so 11 is to 7 will be the value that we found in quantity number 1 so friends first of all listen the question carefully a boy which is 4 years older than his brother so first of all we have assumed that the boy age is x and the brother age will be x minus 4 so after 4 years so x plus 4 
this boy age will be two times right so two times will be two into his brother age will be x minus four after two years will be plus two so after simplifying this we got x is equal to eight the resultant value will be boy is equal to eight years and the brother will be eight minus four the resultant will be four so now we can say that boy age will be eight and the brother age will be four but the question is what is the ratio of their ages after three years from now so after three years so eight plus three will be eleven and the brother age four plus three will be seven so Finally, by using quantity number 1 data, we have found the ratio that is 11 is to 7. So, this can be taken as 11 by 7. So, this is the answer for quantity number 1. Quantity number 2. The average age of a family consists of a father, a mother, two boys and a youngest girl who is 4 years younger than one brother and 2 years younger than another brother is 21. The difference between the ages of mother and a father is 5 years. So the ratio between age of parent and a child is 5 is to 2. So what is the ratio between ages of mother and a girl child if the father is eldest in a family? So friends, first of all, uh, out of I think totally there are 5 members in a family, right? And the average age will be 21. It's a direct statement. And uh, we found that the father will be the eldest in a family, okay? And the data is the father and mother age, the difference should be 5 years. So these are the data they have given. And also ratio will be 5 is to 2. So parents and children's age, child age will be 5 is to 2. So our target to find what is the age of mother and also we need to find what is the girl child, right? Age of girl child. One of the interesting question. So friends, first of all, I think, let me do one thing friends. Totally there are 5 members in a family, right? And we know that the average will be 21. So we can say that the total age of a family friends. So total age so will be five members in a family and the age will be 21 the resultant will be 105 so 105 will be the total age of the family right and uh, here uh, the ratio of parent and a child will be 5 is to 2 right so parent and the children will be 5 is to 2 so we can say that the parents will be in the five parts and the children will be in the two parts so 5 is to 2 will be the ratio so let me do one thing first of all we can find what is sum of mother and father age because we know that the parents will be five part so sum of parent that is father and the mother right so sum of father and mother will be 105 will be the total so out of this we need to find only the parents age so parent will be five part and the total will be five plus two seven so when we cancel this the resultant will be one so this will be 15 15 into 5 will be 75 so finally we can say that 75 will be the sum of father and mother age right so next is this will be the sum of father and mother i think that we know the total will be 105 and the remaining 30 will be the children right so remaining 30 will be the children i think we have three children right there are two brother and one a girl so we can say that the total age of children will be 30 years and the total age of family will be 105 so our target to find what is the age of mother right so friends let me do one thing we already know that listen here father and mother that age difference will be five years and father should be the eldest in a family so let me take this as 35 will be mother's age and 40 will be the father's age right so easily we can guess mother age will be 30 and father age will be 40 why because so 40 will be the eldest right so we can say that father will be the eldest in a family and mother will be 35 the difference between mother and father will be 5 years 35 and 40 the difference will be 5 years so according to the data we can surely say that mother age will be 35 so finally we have calculated the mother age as 35 and next is our target to find what is girl child okay so friends listen here i think in the third line they have given a point that youngest girl child who is four years younger than one brother and two years younger than another brother and we know that the total children age will be 30 listen here friends i'm just going to take the girl age as x right so girl age will be x and the total age will be 30 and the girl age will be x and the brother age listen here this girl is four years younger than one brother so this can be taken as x plus four and again this girl is two years younger than another brother so this can be taken as x plus two so friends total children age will be 30 and the girl age will be x and this girl is four years younger than one brother and this girl is two years younger than another brother so if we find what is the value of x the resultant will be the age of the girl right so it will be 3x plus 6 
So 3x when we bring the 6 towards left hand side 30 minus 6 will be 24 3x is equal to 24 so x is equal to 8. So finally we can say that x is equal to 8 will be the age of a girl and the age of a mother will be 35 right. So we need to find what is the ratio between a mother and a girl. So mother ratio will be 35 and the girl ratio will be 8. So finally we can say that we have found the quantity 2 ratio that is 35 is to 8 and quantity 1 ratio that is 11 by 7. So friends listen carefully uh, you should know how to write this and also you should know how to frame this equation both are most important right. So friends listen here friends if this girl age younger girl age, age is 8 so let me substitute here girl age will be 8 and the brother age will be 8 plus 4 will be 12 and 8 plus 2 will be 10 according to the given data a girl is 4 years younger than one brother and the girl is 2 years younger than another brother. Can you able to understand this concept and the total age will be 30 just most important if you need to practice you need to practice a lot right if you practice a lot easily you can write this number without framing this equation so friends now we got 35 is to 8 quantity number 2 so quantity number 1 will be 11 by 7 now we need to compare this right so 11 by 7 and here it is 35 by 8 I think this will be only one time 11 by 7 will be one point something it will be 4 or 5 point something so we can definitely say that quantity 2 will be greater than so quantity 1 quantity 2 so finally we can say that answer for this question will be quantity 1 less than quantity 2 or quantity 2 greater than quantity 1. Question number 5 the ratio between A's present age and B's present age will be 2 is to 3 so after 4 years the ratio will become 7 is to 10 so what was the age of B 10 years ago. So hence it's simplest question I think so because the quantity number one is based on problems on ages. They are two person A and B so quantity number one. So two person A is to B ratio will be two is to three taken as two x plus three x right. So after four years so this can be written as two x plus four divided by and B's age will be three x plus four. Now the ratio becomes seven by ten so seven divided by ten. So if we solve this then we can easily find what is the age of A and also we can find what is the age of B. So friends when we cross this this can be written as 20x plus 40 is equals to 21x plus 28 right. So I think uh, 21x minus 20x will be x and 40 28 will be 12. So finally we can say that x is equal to 12 but our target to find what is the age of b. So age of b will be 3x so 3 into 12 will be 36. So finally we got b age will be 36. So friends listen carefully they are asking what is the age of B 10 years ago. So 10 years ago definitely we can say that the B age will be 26 years. So finally we can say that the age of B 10 years ago will be 26 which is answer for quantity number 1 right. So finally we got the answer quantity number 1 which is 26. So friends let me move on to quantity number 2. The average age of 20 girls in a class is two third of the boys in a class. An average age of 36 boy in a class is 4 fifth of the girls in a class. So approximately what is the average age of a class. So friends I think this quantity number 2 is based on average right. So they are talking about 20 girls and 36 boys. So 20 girls 36 boys. So sum of observation will be 20 plus 36 will be 56. So we can say that the total will be 56. And first of all 20 girls average will be 2 third of the boys. So friends listen here. Let we do one thing 20 girls right two third of the boys so two by third and we already know that the boys will be 36 first data right and second will be boys 36 boys will be four fifth of the girls so we can say that 36 boys will be four by five of girls which is 20 so if we solve this we can easily find what is the average of total classroom but we need to find an approximate answer right so i think when we cancel this on three table which will be 12 12 twos are 24 24 into 20 will be 48 right so 480 so we can say that 480 and second this can be taken as 4 so 4 fours are 16 16 into 36 will be uh, 576 so this will be 576 divided by 56 so when we add both the numbers so it will be 6 so so 1056 so finally 1056 divided by 56 our target to find an approximate answer then this can be one time and then the remaining will be uh, 11 which is 8 5 of 40 so 8 times something it will be 18 point something friends so we can say 19 friends and uh, 
I don't know whether it's approximately 18 or 19, but we can surely say that quantity number 1 is 26. Even though it's 18 or 19, we can say that quantity number 1 is greater than quantity number 2. This is quantity number 2, which is 19. And we already got quantity number 1, which is 26. So finally, by comparing both the quantities, we can say that quantity number 1 is greater than quantity number 2. Question number 6. After working for 8 days, A find that only 1 by 3rd of the work has been done. E employs B who is 60% efficient as A. How many more days will A and B take to complete the job? So friends, it's one of the simple question, but the concept is most important, right? So friends, this quantity number one is based on time and work. So friends, first of all, after working for eight days, A find only one by third of the work has been done. First of all, A is starting a work and E is working for eight days and E found that only one by third of the work is done. Listen here friends, first of all, let me write this as quantity number one, right? And first of all, A is working for eight days, right? So after working for eight days, E found that only one by third of the work is done. So we can surely say that one day work done by A will be 1 by 3 into 8 will be 1 by 24th of work. Right? So friends, 1 by 24 work is done by A in one day. Why? Because 8 day, <coughs> so he worked for 8 day. After working for 8 day, he found only 1 by 3rd of the work is done. So one day work will be 1 by 24. That is done by A, right? So after 8 days, he decided to appoint B, which is 60% efficient as A. Listen carefully friends, E is 60% efficient as compared to A. So we can surely say that the person B is 60% efficient of 1 by 24. Why? Because we already know that A will, A's one day work will be 1 by 24. So B is 60% of A. So 60% efficient of A that is 1 by 24. This can be written as 60% can be taken as 60 divided by 100. So when we cancel this 6 by 10, 6 fours are 24. So this can be written as, so B is one day work will be 1 divided by 40. So friends, 1 divided by 40th work will be done by B in one day. And similarly, A one day work will be 1 by 24. So after 8 days, A work, E completes only 1 by 3rd of the work. So the remaining work will be 1 minus 1 by 3. So 2 by 3rd of the work should be done by A. And also 2 by work, 2 by 3rd of the work should be done by B, right? So friends, and our target to find how many more days will A and B take to complete the job. We know that one day work done by A will be 24. And one day work done by B will be 1 by 40. So when we take LCM, so LCM will be 40, 24. So 120 will be LCM. So I think this will be 5 and uh, this will be 3. 8 divided by 120. This will be 1 divided by 15. So finally, A and B can complete a piece of work in 15 days. Only 2 by 3rd of the part remaining, right? So this can be done as 15 into 2 by 3. So 5 and 10 days. So finally, we can say that 10 days will be the answer for quantity number 1. So finally, we got 10 days. And so interesting question. But the concept is important, right? Solving how we are solving how we are using a method that is most important so friends first of all <coughs> so friends first of all a is working for eight days and after eight days he found only one by third of the work is remaining so a one day work will be one by 24 and the remain one by third of the work is completed so the remaining work will be two by three and after one by third of the work gets completed a is appointing b and b is 60 percent efficient as a so 60 percent efficient of a we already know that a's one day work will be one by 24 so b one day work will be one by 40 and both a and b can complete a piece of work in 15 days and we know that only two by third of the work is remaining so two by third into 15 the resultant will be 10 days so finally we can say that for quantity number one the answer will be 10 days quantity number two Eight men and four women together can complete a piece of work in six days. Work done by a man in one day is double the work done by a woman in one day. If eight men and four women started working and after two days, four men left and four new women joined. In how many more days will the work be completed? So friends, listen carefully. The concept is most important, right? First of all, eight men and four women working. After two days, four men left and four new women joined. And they have given a data that work done by a man in one day is double the work done by a woman. So we can take this as two women is equal to one man, right? And our target is how many more days will the work be completed? So friends, listen here friends. First of all, eight men and four women, right? They can complete a piece of work in six days. 
and we know that they are first of all they are working for two days so into two the resultant will be one by three so one by three of the work one by third of the work is completed in two days and the remaining work will be two by three so two by third of the work is remaining listen here friends eight men four women can complete a piece of work in six days after two days only one by third of the work is completed and the remaining will be two by third of the work and now what they are doing is they are adding additional four men is left and four women is joined right so before going for this we already know that one man is equals to two women right according to the data we can say that one man will equal to two women mm -hmm. but our target is listen here friends i'm just going to find work done by men alone and also work done by women alone so that we can easily calculate the value so friends it's one of the important step i'm just going to find work done by first of all let me target women right so work done by women in one day so we already know that eight men and four women working right so we know that eight men will be equal to 16 women so 16 women plus four women is equal to 20 women so 20 women one day work friends so we this can be done as 1 by 20 into 6 so this can be done as 1 divided by 120 so one day work done by the women will be 120 and similarly work done by men so work done by a man in one day similarly i'm just going to convert this women into men right so and we know that eight men and four women so eight men and four women will be two men is equals to two men right so eight plus two will be ten so ten men ten men one day work will be one by ten so into six the resultant will be one by sixty so friends 20 women can complete a work that is one day work will be 1 by 20 and uh, a man one day work will be 1 by 60. Now what they are saying is four men left right they are saying that a four men left and four new women is joined. If four men left the remaining will be only four men and four new women join right so this will become eight women. So we already know that four and uh, one man work done will be 1 by 60. So this can be done as 1 by 60 and 8 into 1 woman. So 1 woman will be 1 by 20. So 1 divided by 120. So when we cancel this, this will be 15. Again when we cancel this will be uh, 15. Right? So 1 by 15, 1 by 15 will be 2 by 15. So friends, finally we can say that after working for 2 days, where 4 men left. So the remaining will be 4 men. So 4 women join. The remaining will be 8 women and the capacity will be 2 by 15 and the remaining work will be 2 by 3. So this can be so finally the number of days. So 2 by 3 into 15 divided by 2. We can cancel 2 and 2. We can cancel this on 5 tables. So finally 5 days is required. So friends by using the data in quantity 2 we have found the answer is 5 days. By using quantity 1 we found the answer is 10 days but we need to compare this right while comparing quantity 1 will be greater than quantity 2. So finally we got an answer that is quantity 1 is greater than quantity 2. So friends one of the most important concept listen the concept carefully 8 men 4 women can complete a piece of work in 6 days but after working for 2 days so they work for 2 days 1 by 3rd of the work gets completed and the remaining work will be 2 by 3 right and uh, 1 man is equal to 2 women because they have clearly told that work done by man in 1 day is double the work done by a woman so we can take this as 2 women is equals to 1 man and I am just going to find work done by women alone so women alone so women alone can complete a piece of work right so one day work done by women we already know that eight men plus four women eight men is equal to 16 women so 20 women one day work so one divided by 120 similarly one man one day work so here it is one woman one day work will be one by 120 one man one day work will be one divided by 60 and both of them having a capacity to complete a piece of job in two by 15 and the remaining work will be two by three so finally we can say that five days they take to complete a work and quantity number one by using quantity number one data we have found 10 days quantity number two is five days so finally we can say that quantity number one is greater than quantity number two question number seven the speed of a car is two times the speed of the train of length 250 meter crossing a bridge of 350 meter in 24 seconds so what is the speed of the car in kilometers per hour so friends here they are talking about uh, the question quantity number one is based on time and distance right we need to find what is the speed of the car but the speed of the car is twice the speed of the train so friends let me do one thing listen the concept carefully and uh, if a train crosses a platform right we need to add the total distance covered by the train will be 
length of the platform and also length of the train right so here the length of the train will be 250 meter and length of the platform will be 350 meter so divided by so speed is equal to distance by time so distance traveled by the train will be the length of the train plus length of the platform so divided by time will be 24 seconds so this can be done as 0 0 so this will be 6 right 600 divided by 24 the resultant will be 25 i think so it's 25 so meter per second so meter per second so friends but our target to find what is the speed of the car in kilometers per hour right so friends listen hey friends one of the simple concept here the quantity 2 is completely based on meters and quantity 1 we need to find an answer in kilometers per hour without solving any question we can directly say that quantity 1 will be greater than quantity 2 why because quantity 1 the answer will be kilometer quantity 2 the answer will be in meters we can definitely say that always kilometer will be greater than so we can say that kilometers is greater than so if not we can find the answer right so 25 meter per second in order to convert this into meet kilometer per hour which is 18 divided by 5 so 5 into 18 will be 90 so 90 kilometers per hour will be the speed of the train but our target to find what is the speed of the car so speed of the car will be two times the speed of the train so here speed of the train is 90 kilometers per hour so speed of the car speed of car will be 180 kilometers per hour so finally by using data number one that is quantity number one we found that the answer will be 180 kilometers per hour so let me move on to quantity number two two trains of length each 500 meter crosses each other in 12.5 seconds traveling in opposite direction so one of the train crosses a pole in 10 seconds what is the speed of slower train so friends our target to find the speed of slower train but one of the train crosses a pole in 10 seconds and we know that two trains of length will be 500 meter each listen carefully two trains of a length each will be 500 meter so train 1 will be 500 meter train 2 will be 500 meter and one train crosses a pole in 10 seconds so let me do one thing friends it's quantity number two right this will be quantity number one so one train will be 500 meter so crosses a pole in 10 seconds 10 seconds right so 10 seconds so finally we can say that the speed of the train will be 500 meter divided by 10 seconds will be 50 meter per second so finally we can say that one train speed will be 50 meter per second and uh, we need to find what is the which is slower train and also faster train but our target to find what is the speed of slower train so uh, so two trains of each 500 meter length so friends listen hey friends i think uh, let me do one thing we know that two train crosses in 12.5 seconds right and we can say that uh, time is equal to distance divided by speed where time will be 12.5 second is equal to distance so both the train distance will be 500 meters right and we already know that both the trains are moving in an opposite direction so train 1 500 train 2 500 so the total distance will be 1000 distance will be 1000 divided by speed and let me do one thing keep the speed as 50 meter per second and another speed as x so this can be written as x plus 50 so friends listen here we know that there are two trains one is slower train and one is faster train and we found that one train speed will be 50 meter per second but we don't know what about the other speed so let me keep this as x right so finally this can be written as so 12.5 into 50 which is 625 so 1000 minus 625 divided by 12 right so divided by 12.5 will be 30 meter per second so finally we can say that x is equal to 30 meter per second listen here friends one speed train will be 50 meter per second another train speed will be 30 meter per second our target to find what is the speed of the slower train so speed of the slower train will be 30 meter per second so finally the quantity number two the answer will be 30 meter per second and quantity number one the answer will be 180 kilometers per hour so we can directly say that quantity number one will be greater than quantity quantity number two so friends we don't want to solve this why because quantity number one we need to find the answer in kilometer per hour and quantity number two is in meters right so definitely by seeing 180 kilometers it will not be lesser when compared to quantity two so we can directly say quantity one is greater than quantity two so if not if both the answers we need to find in kilometers so we need to find it no other way right so finally we can say that the answer for this question will be quantity one is greater than quantity two 
so friends one of the most important concept to try to solve all the question faster that is important yeah, just take one minute or one minute 30 seconds but after one minute 30 seconds you should solve the answer that is important right after one minute 30 seconds you should not stuck anywhere else and you should not say I'm, I'm not getting an answer that is not the good idea right so if you decided to take this question in an exam within one or one minute or two minutes you should definitely crack this question which is most important